This is my editing and gaming PC, and at its heart, it's got an Intel Core i7 13700K, and if you own the CPU or any other 13th gen KSQ CPU, you will know them absolute furnaces and they're very hard to cool. And that is why I've bought this contact frame from Thermal Right to get sort of any resemblance of control of the temperatures on my 13700K because this thing will run at like 100 degrees C. It's kind of a joke at this point. So before I get into this video, let me know. Have you ever installed a contact frame for your 12th or 13th gen CPU? Let me know in the comments down below. For those of you that don't know what a contact frame is or why you would even need one in the first place, and the main reason is Intel's engineering is not too great. And that is because the integrated loading mechanism on the LGA1700 socket is not great at all. It is prone to bending LGA1700 CPUs, so that is not good because what this will do is it will reduce the contact patch between the IHS of the CPU and the cold plate of the cooler, therefore increasing temperatures, which is, if you know anything about PCs, is not great at all. And this is where a contact frame would come in because what they do is they completely remove the integrated loading mechanism and they prevent CPUs from bending, which is great for cooling. Let me get this straight, you kind of need one for 12th, 13th gen, and maybe even 14th gen from what I hear, then going to be a bit of a refresh, so this might still stick for that. You shouldn't have to buy one of these, but if you're spending 300 pounds on a motherboard and a processor, an extra nine quid is not really going to hurt, is it? You shouldn't need to spend this money, but then again, you may as well. So back to my PC and my 13700K is a right old pain to call and that is because whenever I'd run a Cinebench R23 test it would instantly shoot up to 100 degrees C basically within 5 seconds which is never ideal is it. This doesn't concern me too much as my workload isn't Cinebench R23, it's Premiere Pro and gaming so the CPU is never going to be stressed that much but then again it's jumping straight up to 100C, which is never good, is it? And speaking of games, I was playing Battlefield 2042 the other night and it did actually reach 100 degrees C on the CPU, which is never ideal, is it? The CPU should never be reaching anywhere near 100 degrees C. So I thought, I'm going to have to buy this contact frame, aren't I? So yeah, I bought it. And it's not like I've even got a terrible caller either. I've got a H150i Pro XT from Corsair, which is a 360 mil radiated all-in-one liquid caller. So it's not a bad caller by any means. This thing should call any consumer CPU just fine. But when it comes to the 13700K, it doesn't do a great job. But I don't think it's on the caller, if that makes sense. I think it's more down to Mainly the lack of a contact frame and my motherboard pushing the CPU too hard, but more on that in a bit. To get a contact frame installed for LGA 1700 CPUs, I would firstly recommend installing your CPU in the socket if you haven't done so already. These LGA pins in the motherboard are extremely fragile and you don't want to bend them at all. I would also recommend installing your caller's backplate as well and this will keep the socket backplate in place so it doesn't fall down or anything like that as well so I'd recommend doing this. Now use the hex screw which was included with your contact frame to unscrew the bolts of the ILM and remove both ends of the retention clip so now you should be left with a CPU socket with nothing around it. Make sure you hold on to the ILM though because you might need this for when you come to sell your motherboard in the future or if you ever need to RMA it. So make sure you hold on to these, store them someplace safe. Also make sure you hold on to the four hex screws as you will need these when you install the contact frame. And speaking of which, to get that mounted, just place it gently on top of your CPU socket while your CPU is inside the socket, mind you. Making sure all of the screw holes align just fine. From here, place all four screws in and tighten them in a crisscross pattern. This will ensure an even distribution of pressure. And that's it, you've successfully mounted a contact frame for your LGA 1700 socket CPU. Now you can just install your cooler as you would normally. So how much of a difference has this contact frame actually made for my 13700K? And I would have to say it's been pretty substantial, but nothing too massive, if that makes sense. Looking at Cinebench R23, which is an AVX workload, so it pushes the CPU incredibly hard, it will still reach 100 degrees C while being clocked at 5.1 GHz on all of the P cores. However, it won't 
instantly shoot up to 100 degrees C anymore like it did without the contact frame. It will take around two to three minutes to reach 100 degrees C in Cinebench, which is a pretty big improvement, if I'm honest. It's better than like five seconds. So this doesn't really concern me, if I'm honest, because I never use Cinebench for anything. I use Premiere Pro, which is not the most CPU demanding task out there. So yeah this is a win in my book and in gaming i did see a pretty substantial difference as well because in battlefield 2042 which is the most cpu demanding game that i play i noticed that it wasn't reaching 100 degrees c anymore we was hovering around the high 80s to low 90s so not that much of a problem there the cpu is still getting very hot but then again it's not 100 degrees c i can't boil water with it so yeah i think the main reason why battlefield 2042 is incredibly cpu demanding and why it makes cpus run incredibly hot is because it uses the avx instruction set which is known to run cpus pretty hard getting them pretty hot so i'm covered in battlefield i'll be covered in pretty much any other game that i play which is nice peace of mind to be honest because i don't want this pc failing on me anytime soon earlier in the video i did mention that my msi motherboard is pushing my intel cpu quite far and to be honest i'd say too far and that is because this motherboard is like yes you're going to run at five gigahertz at least and it's going to be at no matter what the cost is so if it's running at 100 degrees c yeah we'll just run it at 5.1 gigahertz I don't want this because it's not good for the longevity of the processor and it's also not good for the temps as well because it's just running way too hot. And I believe it's got something to do with the boost state of the processor. Different Z series motherboards will push Intel CPUs differently and it seems that this motherboard just pushes this 13700K way too far. If you didn't know, my motherboard is a Z690 MSI Force Wi-Fi, I believe it's called. And it's a good motherboard, don't get me wrong, very well built, 5M.2 size, everything you would ever need on a motherboard. So for some future videos, I might dive into it and actually do some more tweaking to the CPU as I've already tried undervolting it and that didn't really work because when I'm playing Battlefield 1, which is a game I play quite a lot, I'd get a blue screen sometimes while loading in a map and it was pretty repeatable so I decided let's dial back this undervolt or completely remove it in which case i did and the blue screen stopped so this thing is being pushed basically to its limits and i'm not sure if i actually quite like that so for longevity and just thermals and peace of mind i'm going to have to do some tweaking in this bios which i might do for some future content but i don't think i'm going to do it anytime soon because to be honest i've got a lot on my plate right now with other bits of content and i can't quite be bothered tuning this motherboard at the minute if if i'm honest so other than this i could try increasing the fan speeds on my pc which i don't want to do because it probably won't help that much and it will just make the pc louder which is something that i don't particularly want or i could do with getting a more airflow oriented case something like a corsair 5000d which is a brilliant case i've built inside one before and it's a great case and the fact that the nzxt h700 isn't particularly known to be the most airflow optimized case in the world it might be worth something looking into so other than that though i'm going to leave the video here if you enjoyed this one leave it a like stay subscribed for more tech content and i'll catch you in the next one